that database is actually going to live inside of this website. It's going to be a WCF data service. So in order to work with this, first of all, I'm going to add what's called an entity model for the database that I want to work with. So if I go out here and I search for ADO and I find my ADO.net entity data models, um, we'll call this demodb.edmx. Um, this allows me to go out and pull from a database where I've got all this stuff set. So it's going to pull in this database. We'll include our sensitive data in the connection string. Um, we'll give this a name. We're going to call this demodb entities. And click on next. And it's going to create that entity connection string for us. But it's also going to go out to the database. It's actually going to pull out all of the elements I need, all the schema, all the objects, all the data. And I'm going to go ahead and say add those elements to our model. So it's going to pluralize and singularize and let foreign key relationships and give us everything that we need. So I can say add the views and the tables, which should actually give me three objects. So there's my games and my views. It's actually, this included a bunch of federation stuff I don't necessarily need, so I'll leave those off. But I'm going to include the D games because I want to be able to show what games are currently being played. Click on finish. And this is then going to give us a nice graphical representation of what this schema looks like. It also generates code for me that will actually allow me to um, interact and work with that data database, or that data that's created. So Visual Studio creates the, uh, the actual entity framework model for us. And I can see here's my games. Here's my game results. Move this over here. You can see that here's all how this stuff is set up. If I do the uh, show me how this is actually uh, wired up, I could uh, then go out and say, okay, well, show me the, the, the mapping details and the whatever. Um, but the key is, is that I've got these three objects inside of my database. So if I go over to my Solution Explorer, is now that I've got this entity model created for DemoDB, is I can right-click on this and I can say add a WCF data service, which is the old data service of, of, of the data I want to work with. So if I search for the WCF data service, call it ORPA.service, click on add. This is going to create that ORPA data service. Now, it's going to implement an interface, which is going to be my demo DB entities. That's the object class of objects that it's going to expose out. Um, and then I'm going to set up some access rules. And for purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use the big knife and just expose everything out and allow us to go out and create and play this game. So I'm going into my config file. I'm going to set the entity access rule. And I can say for games, I can say on this, interesting. Games, and I can say access rights to all. So I want to allow you to, to write to games. I can say config, set entity access rule on game results, set our access rights all on that. I can also say config, set entity access rule on the games, and I can say entity access writes, say, all read. So maybe I just want to allow people to uh, just read from the view, not update it. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some access behavior. And I'm going to set my operation access rule to allow me to execute stored procedures, functions, and methods. And so I'm basically going out and turning that stuff on. Um, what happens is that this, by virtue of ORPA.service, implementing this data service interface is that if I was to go out to my solution and right click on this and say view this in the browser, what it's going to do is it's going to compile up my data service code, my entity model, and it's going to create for me an OData endpoint, which is going to be a way to, to XML to go out and talk to uh, all of the different uh, projects that make this thing work. So if I take this over here, what you'll see is that I've got my game results, games, and V games. Now, I've already de deployed one of these out. I've actually put it out here to uh, odata.vendotips.com, and I've deployed this out into the cloud. And this should have the exact same interface, except that in this case, I actually have data. So 
for instance, if I were to say, go back in here, go out and say games, it's then going to return back the list of games uh, from Banco Tips. Um, if I was to go back and say, go back out to the local whatever, and I did the same thing where I went out to this and said games, I'll get an empty result set because there aren't any games yet. So let's go back to this, go back to this. And so when I'm on this and I go games, then there's no games created yet because we haven't done that. Um, what we need to do is create a way that our phone can add games to our application. So that service that we defined out in here can be consumed from our application. The way we're going to do this is by taking our new service, and we're going to publish it up into the cloud. The way we publish it to the cloud is by right-clicking on this. You remember when we created the cloud application with that role that's got the RPA site that deployed it out to rpademo.cloudapp.net. Um, I can right-click on this, and I can say publish on the website, and it's going to know to send this to my RPA on wd7.cloudapp.net, which is the hosted instance we created. Um, it's going to push it out to the website, RPA site, instance zero web. Um, and then I can say, okay, here's use untrusted certificate. Type in my password and click on publish. And if I did this right, what's going to happen is it's going to go through and it's going to create the package, which is just going to be the website resources. And it's going to push it into the cloud for me so I can actually see it right away uh, up on RPA on wp7.cloudapp.net. In fact, if you're watching this, you'd be able to browse out to it as well. So let's let this thing finish. Updating, and then it's complete. We can verify that it's there by going out to where we got that, go out to this page here, RPA and um, Windows Phone 7, and say ORPA.service. And now we've got running in the cloud that quickly all of our game data. So I can go to games. And again, this is using that new SQL Azure database, which is empty. Um, I could go against uh, the Banco Tiffs uh, .cloud .net, and I could go to the same thing. But this this one here is yeah, actually old data. Banco Tips .com. The thing is, is that I could then this has actually got some some data out there that we could use, so I can verify that things are working. So we could do it either way when we get into the actual phone app. Um, but I've got that service. We're going to consume that inside of our phone application. So let's go back up here to our phone application, and let's go right here and take a look at our main page. And I want to load up the uh, main page with the list of all the games that we've got. So what I can do? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm not seeing the questions is because what you can, what I'm seeing is, is the screen that I'm actually looking at here. So I can see there's a question there. So looking at that. Um, so what's what's happening here is what happens when the app gets tombstone is that the token that we retrieve back to our phone application, I stored in the application settings by creating that application settings in the app XAML file. So that token is going to be stored, and when I open it back up, it's going to have that token, and so it'll automatically use that value. If that token isn't there, then it's going to redirect me out to the login page to get that data. Um, that access control is also available in that NuGet package that we uh, Wagner created that you can download and use with a uh, Windows phone for an Azure uh, toolkit, and what it, it basically does the same kind of a thing stores it in a uh, application setting. What the NuGet package does is it creates all the code that I created by hand. I just wanted to do it. There's not a lot of code to it, so I just wanted to explain it, what's, what's actually happening with it. Does that answer all the questions on, on the tombstoning of the application? Okay, so, so here we've got our game. We've got the login happening when this page, which is our main page, loads. It's basically going out and, and doing the uh, start. Let me just get rid of the extra comments about code here just so it's a little clearer. You can see that our XAML is pretty simple. You know, I mean, this is all of it entirely. I've got a grid. I've got the stack panel. I've got the, the layout. I've got my app bar. Um, what I want to do is I want to do the layout and have a, a list box added to this as well as a couple of controls 
we're creating new games and playing uh, the rock, paper, scissors on the phone. Um, I'm going to take in my solution here, I'm going to just pin this down, I'm going to add to this uh, some image files for that logout button, as well as a couple of other ones that I've already got. Um, and I'm going to pull that from here, where I've got a folder of images. And what you'll see is that I've actually got, like, paper and a couple of other things. And uh, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag that folder into my project for Rock Paper RPA Client. And it's going to add that folder of images, which is basically the graphical pieces that you've got for that I want to work with. Um, one of the things that happens is that each of these has been added, but I want to make sure they get copied out with the application so I can actually see them. Um, the trick on that is to take the uh, images here and click on the properties and say copy them to the output directory. Do copy always and also set the build action to, to refer to these as content. It just makes it easier to uh, reference the uh, actual images and pieces and parts, right? So that when I look at the, uh, like on the app bar, where I've got images, it's going to use that logout PNG file for how that is going to work.